Good and Hare Stadium. Uh, it, was a, it was a great day, Phil. It, it's a beautiful day for football and not a cloud in the sky. And we start, start out right here getting after the Sasson and, and our defensive front is, is playing tremendous football right now. There's a lot of plays. Donnie Humphrey makes a play there with pressure before by Quincy Williams and Quincy's in on that one. Doug Smith and Ben Thomas and Dow Altman. We're showing a few plays of the first quarter when Auburn stopped uh, the, the Maryland right drive. There. Fine play by Donnie Humphrey on that little flare screen that they run and do a great job with it, as Coach Casey and our coaching staff has done a great job all year long. As Donnie Humphrey and Quincy again, Quincy Williams is playing terrific football now and just it just, uh, as a matter of fact, our defensive front is, they, they're getting pressure, and uh, we're giving up some yards throwing the football, but we played against great quarterbacks. There you can see Donnie Humphrey and, and uh, Ben Thomas, and they they kept pressure on Sison all day long, and he just got out of it. Here's a super play by Doug Smith on the reverse. Those things scare you to death, but that penetration like that can, can give them a bad play just as easy as it can. But you hear a fine play by Tommy Powell. Again, we had pretty good pressure on the quarterback. And it took us a while. There's Greg Carr and Jeff Jackson, our fine senior linebacker. Here's a pitch from Randy to Lionel. I believe this is in the... Just in the, the end first, of the quarter. End of the first quarter. And it was nothing, nothing at the quarter. And we come back and, and score a couple of times in the first quarter. Here's a pitch. I believe it was that a fourth down play there, a third down. Third down play. play. Third, third and shorter. Uh, no, it was fourth and one. You're fourth right. Fourth and one. And, fourth and, one. and uh, Randy and have excellent execution on the on the play and throw an interception here and and they get called for a late hit on on Randy and and uh, nullifies the interception, keeps our drive alive. And you can see both come across and make a fine tackle on the on the interception right there. That's the second week in a row he's made a tackle on the interception. You might all be playing defense. <laughs> As fine run by Tommy, Tommy A.G. picks up seven, eight yards. And, and I really and truly have been looking for Tommy to have this kind of day because he's got some tremendous strength and he's faster than people think he is. He just don't, he doesn't get to utilize it as much as he Now, they left Chris Woods uncovered here. I don't know if that was a mistake or maybe they were just going to play the run all the way, but... They left him uncovered, and Randy just raised up and threw the ball out there for the touchdown and made it mighty easy. And Chris Woods is, of course, our fine senior split in, and there's a fine a young man as we have on the football team, a leader in our fellowship of Christian athletes. They come back on, on our fence here, and we do an excellent job of stopping them again and getting the football, and you can see us ice and directing traffic there, and that's great effort by Dow Altman, and Ben Thomas comes in and makes a hit along with Greg Carr. Five or six sacks yesterday. Got to him. That's right. We got pressure on him. Here's a they're punting to us. I almost get to the wall here. Mm -hmm. That was uh, Trey Gaines, who is the uh, freshman. Here's, here's lightning strike right here. He missed a couple of tackles at the line of scrimmage. Tommy breaks a couple of tackles, and you can see what kind of speed Tommy has. He's I, mean, I guess he's four six, maybe even four five something, but he's he's got the excellent speed. Good blocking by the offensive line right there. Uh, Randy Stokes and I, I know that Jay Jacobs is in there. There's Yan Coward at center, and I'm not sure who the other guard was. I think it's probably uh, uh, it's either Jeff Ostrowski or, or <laughs> David Jordan, Pat Arrington at, at tackle. Is that they come right back and there's that screen pass again that, that they do such a great job of, of running and, and knocking number, people down. That too. number 34 for Maryland is a football player too. He's one of the strongest running backs. There he goes again, Jonah. Terrific football player, great balance, strength. <clears throat> they were handicapped a little bit yesterday because they lost their fullback uh, early in the ball game. And, Bedonic. Right, and, and uh, they, they get down close, but they can't move it at the at the end, and they end up kicking the field goal, and it's 14 to 3 at half. We had moved the ball pretty well. There's David Jordan, and David's having a fine senior year here. Again, his pressure by Ben Thomas and Gerald Robinson, and gets them for a big loss and keeps them backed up and keeps them in the hole. And again, we go out at uh, 14 to 3 at halftime. We'll be back in just a minute. 
Homecoming, a lot of pageantry yesterday at Jordan Hare Stadium. At halftime, uh, Lieutenant Edward Gibbons, who's a Montgomery native, was uh, and a 1982 graduate of Auburn, was presented the Hughes Trophy, that designating him as the top Army ROTC graduate in the United States. Uh, Dr. Bailey made, making that presentation. He maintained a four-point average in his junior and senior years at Auburn while he was on the dean's list for eight consecutive quarters. That is a very handsome trophy there. Then, also during halftime ceremonies, Deborah Rickles of Huntsville was named homecoming queen of 1983, presented uh, to the crowd by Governor Wallace. And we, uh, also, I think, we also honored uh, Mr. Sewell, Mr. Roy B. Sewell. And Mr. Auburn. Right, Mr. Auburn yesterday before the game, and uh, nobody has meant more to Auburn than Mr. Sewell has as far as the contributions. And he gives. recited the Auburn Creed, did a great job. Uh, and verbatim, and with no it. notes. <laughs> and, uh, but it was, it was a fun day, and of course the excitement around the football game, we made it exciting because and Maryland did too. They did their part. This is about the third time this year that uh, you know we the turnovers we, come we early get in the, the second We get half. the football and and move it and and I think it's the fourth game in a row really. Uh, we did it at Georgia Tech, and Mississippi State last week against Florida, and again yesterday. We take the ball and, and after the half and we turn it over. I certainly don't want that to get to be a habit. And I'll tell you what, that guy right there it doesn't take him long to move the football and just to, he has got a strong strong arm and he just hangs that thing out there on the line and of course we we get you can see we're getting pressure on him they get a tip ball right there for a touchdown and it's 14 to 10. Uh, we come back on offense and we're going to move it matter of fact we take it all the way the length of the field and the head football coach made a stupid decision to go for a touchdown rather than a field goal and and uh, we came up short and they took it 99 yards for a touchdown there's a time throw and catch right there by randy and bo's running inside and we're we're answering the call of that touchdown. We're coming right back down the field just like you're supposed to. His line will run a sweep, good blocking. Third and two play there. There's Jan Cowett and Jeff Lott and Jay Jacobs is get the ball pitched outside the bow. We're running inside, running outside, throwing it a little bit, just doing kind of hunting and pecking and getting the ball moved right on down the field. <coughs> First and goal is a seven now. Yes, we we weren't as sharp yesterday as we as we have been at times, and and of course, right here is a uh, is an example of it. We get the ball pitch, and Bo makes a good run down to the two yard line. And here we go on the fourth down and two for the touchdown, and uh, I can't blame anybody but myself. Now the thing that uh, the reason we were in that situation is because we got to delay a game penalty down there that penalizes five yards, which is ridiculous. There's a fine play by Tommy Powell and, and Greg Carr, but they make a first down there on a key third down situation. And there's a big play for them down the middle, hit the pass, split the seams on our zone coverage and, and get a big chunk of it in, in one lick right there. They come come right back and hit the same big guy. Russell Davis is a great receiver for me, 6'5", and weighs about 210, 215. And that was a third and eight there. Good speed. and. You can see we've got, man, that, that is as fine a throw right there as, as I've ever seen in a college football game, I believe. Under, under hard pressure from Greg Carr, he just threads the needle. And if we come right back, and that put us behind 17 to 14, and you're going to see it doesn't take us long to get the ball back in the end zone. There's Tommy Agee running inside, Bo coming back and running the little counter play. <clears throat> Actually slipped down and his knee touched the ground there. At 37 it, now of Maryland. We're, we're still mixing the passing game in enough to make, keep them honest. Randy comes out and hits Chris Wood. Offensive line, you can see them coming off the football, and, and actually the backs are making their, making their cuts downfield a pretty good bit, and that's easy when it's like that. As Lionel running inside, gets it on down a little closer. Here we're going to take it. Lionel makes a block, Bo gets the ball, and Great effort right there. The guy hits him on about the five-yard line, and he just powers him into the end zone and gets it in right at the, at the marker. Big touchdown there. Big That put us ahead for good right there. And of course, it's into the fourth quarter, man. There's a fine play by Gerald Williams and Dow Altman. And they come back a little shuttle pass, and this is we stop them right here. Great lick right there by David King. And I tell you, about two or three times a ball game, David King is just going to, I mean, he's going to destroy somebody. There's Bo coming back again on the on the little 
misdirection play. And well, it really worked well yesterday. Ran it several times. There's over the top in the third down situation to keep the drive alive. We're running the clock. Running, running the clock and controlling the clock. Here again is Randy coming out, throwing the football to Ed West. I think Ed caught four passes yesterday, and he's been a great player for us all year long. Here's again a little misdirection play, and good blocking by the offensive line. Pat Arrington, there's Jay Jacobs downfield. Jeff Ostrowski and Jeff Lott. As a, just really a base handoff right there. We've been running the option. We decided we'd just play the turret and hand it to him one time. And as Ian Cowart coming off the football, look at the movement they got on that number 63. <laughs> and... You know, when the back could make that cut five yards downfield, it's a lot easier, and it puts a lot of pressure on the linebackers in the secondary because he just hits that thing running full speed, and that makes it 28 to 17. There's Tommy A.G. and Bo and Lionel, and that's... But this guy pitched him in the end zone in three plays. Isn't he? He's amazing. They do as good a job with the screen pass as anybody I've seen. There's Greg Carr coming all the way downfield. I think he picked up 26 yards on that play, and Greg Carr made the tackle. They come right back and hit the screen on the, this one. This is a little flare screen thing that you use. And an almost great play right there by Jimmy Warren. Victor Beasley comes across and makes a hit, knocks him out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And he goes back and under pressure, he hits a crossing route. And he threw it in some places there yesterday that just didn't look like any, any way he could get the ball in there. But he did, and they scored. And we come back in short yardage of uh, they go for going, for, going for two here. And they hand the ball off up inside, thinking that we were coming on the blitz, and and uh, but we come right back and 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 move it again with four minutes and thirty seconds to so go. Just, they only have one timeout. Was that the fourth down play there? That was it. Yes. Okay. Well, we we went for a fourth and inches at the thirty yard line to keep Precisely from getting the ball back. And of course, I've got a tremendous confidence in our in our offensive football team, and and. Uh, were you a little lonely there, though, till they ran that play? Not, not really. I, I, I figured if they got it back, you know, they were, we had as good a chance to hold them there as we did on the other end of the field, and we had a four-point lead, and, you know, they had the, a five-point lead, I guess. And that was a great kick right there by Lewis Colbert, a 50-something yarder that we downed at the three-yard line. and He was magnificent uh, yesterday. They had no timeouts, and right here you can see the ending of the ball game where Quincy Williams hit him, and... Donnie Humphrey scooped the ball into the end zone and fell on it for the for the touchdown. It's a great way for a great football player to end his home stand at, at Auburn. And, of course, that whole senior class is a, is a special group of people. You can take Donnie and Dow and, of course, there's Coach Ross, and they did a great job of coming into Auburn on homecoming and playing and making a great football game out of it. 